Okay, we're live on Facebook and we've started streaming on Zoom. So uh, welcome to the podcast this morning, 30th of June, end of the financial year here in Australia, Mike. So um, it's, it's sort of a little bit different to the US there. Um, I'd like to welcome uh, Jonathan Allerton, head of uh, Salvage um, okay. in Australia and New Zealand for Mannheim Auction Group. Jonathan, welcome. Thank you, Chris. Nice to be with everyone. Hello. Excellent. Mike Lambert, uh, owner and uh, president of um, Bid Buddy or Buddy AI. Mike, welcome. Thank you very much. It's good to uh, be working in Australia. Are you in Denver at the minute? Uh, I've never been in Denver. I've been in Car Springs. <laughs> 60 mile, I know it's only 60 miles, but it's a night and day difference. I don't like Denver. <laughs> oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, Mike. Good to have you on. Uh, Chad, how are you going, mate? Doing well, doing well. Good to be here. Glad to be uh, announcing this uh, this big this big step in the automotive recycling industry today. Excellent, excellent. So on that note, um, the today's podcast we're sort of dedicating it to some work that we've been doing along with Mike and uh, and Jonathan and the Mannheim Group over the past probably six to eight weeks. Uh, we've been working fairly diligently to find a way to bring Mannheim data through to bid buddy um, and uh, we've developed the exact bids model and chat will talk a little bit more about exact bids and what that is and we're announcing uh, the launch of that today uh, we'll be going live with actual um, data available through to the bid buddy users uh, in a couple of weeks uh, just ironing out a few more little bits and pieces there but we're close i think so that's great but what does it mean I suppose is the key question. What are we doing and what does this Mannheim integration mean to the automotive recycling industry and especially the bid buddy users that um, have have the opportunity to use uh, exact bids and bid buddy. So, um, Chad, I suppose I'll throw over to you first, if that's okay. And then I'd, I'd like to hear from Jonathan about why Mannheim is, is engaging in this now. Um, and, and also from Mike, from a bid buddy perspective, how it will enhance that product. So, Chad, tell us a little bit about what is exact bids, why is it um, why is it potentially a good thing for the users, and how does it work? Okay, well, I think in order to explain exact bids, we really have to explain bid buddy to anybody that's not a current bid buddy user. Bid buddy is a tool that helps a recycler make decisions on which vehicles to buy at the auction based on your unique uh, inventory, your unique requests. Uh, sales history, et cetera. And, um, and what exact bids is going to do is going to help you pre-select interchange numbers, applications, the good panels, the bad panels uh, inside your bid buddy uh, instance so that you can speed up the process of previewing cars, see more cars and, and bid on more cars uh, throughout the auctions. We are glad to have Mannheim uh, participating with us and sharing the data through to, to, bid, uh, to bid Buddy. And uh, we're, we're just adding into the, the tool there to actually pre-select those interchange numbers and the, uh, the good panels uh, in that process. Okay. Jonathan, um, tell us a little bit about where Mannheim is now, um, why this is important from a Mannheim perspective, not only from a user and a bid buddy perspective, but what, tell us a little bit about where you're at. Thanks, Chris. Um, I guess it's really been an, an evolution for us um, in terms of our business and how we interact with our customer base. You know, um, we, we, we recognise probably back in uh, the, toward, in, during 2017 um, that we, our auction schedule was very much uh, based on how we used to do auctions 15, 20 years ago. And that worked really well at the time when people would come up to a kind of public auction and participate with their hands in the air and and uh, and bid in the auction lane. But as simulcast evolved and online auctions evolved, um, it became quite clear that people were embracing that technology and wanted to utilise that technology and it had an advantage to their business. And so we looked at that and sort of said, well, uh, we, we started examining sort of how our buyers, what, what, what their buying patterns were, what they purchased, um, where they purchased those vehicles. And so we changed our auctions uh, schedule of and, um, to a centralised auction model, um, uh, which, which allowed for um, uh, premium salvage uh, vehicles, vehicles over 3,000 to be able to be purchased right across the country in one centralised auction. Um, 
And, and you know, yourself and, and Steve Tapner uh, over the years have been pushing this, you know, come on, be a part of, uh, of Bid Buddy and, and give us more information and help, help the buying network, the dismantlers and recyclers with more relevant information for their business. And so um, finally we listened um, once we'd got our uh, auction schedule uh, in place and um, it, ma it makes sense for us. It makes sense for us to provide our, our buyers more information to help them make better decisions. Uh, to give them more time back in their day to focus on their own business. And um, so we're really, really excited to be a part of it. I think, uh, you know, it fits into our business model for how we want to move forward. You know, we want to be a, a technological leader in, in, in our field. And um, this is just one more step in, in, in doing that. And there's plenty more to come. And I'm sure there's lots of things that will come out of, of exact bids, but uh, excited to be uh, beginning the journey with you guys. Excellent. Thanks for that, Jonathan. And I think for everyone that's uh, on the call on, on Facebook or on, on Zoom, they will be very, very happy to hear that um, Mannheim um, is, is really at the forefront and looking to support them. Um, so thanks very much for that. We really do appreciate your support. Mike, tell us a little bit about Bid Buddy, where you've been, where you're at, and, and this uh, new sort of phase and era. Like I said earlier, I'm glad that we're working in Australia. I've, you know, we've been in the United States since 2003. I got about 500 customers in the United States using BidBuddy. And my idea when I created BidBuddy was for the customer to be able to download hundreds of cars and evaluate the best cars for him, let the cream of the crop rise at the top and let them bid on these cars. And one of the biggest painfulest sections before was selecting each and every interchange number. And one of the things that exact bids will do is help you select the interchange number that will make that bidding process fast. With BidBuddy and exact bids and with the data from Mannheim, you're going to be able to take a 200 car auction, 300 car auction, and really narrow that down to 30, 40 cars that you really want to look at, that you really want to buy. And hopefully, this will make Mannheim happy, hopefully pay more for those cars that you really need because um, Bid Buddy's going to show you, you've got potential sales for these 20 part types. It's going to help you create the bid and to maximize your bid and be able to beat the next guy, get that car. And even though one of the things in America that, that customers have tried something with exact bids, and we have some customers doing it, they think that they're in competition. The salvage yard next door is not your competition. They are should be your ally. So with the exact bids, uh, even if everybody knows that's the exact same engine and everybody knows it's the exact same transmission, yard A will have a higher need for that transmission and be able to pay more than yard B. So they're not going to compete each against each other. You're buying the best cars for your demand and for your customer's demand. And then the yard B is going to buy the best for their demand. So, one of the things that we've had in America, people think that, that they're in competition with this yard. They're not. It's going to help everybody. It helps everybody to know all you're going to tell them is which interchange number it is. You're not telling them how to price it. You're not telling them anything about that, about that, because they're getting all that pricing information from the pinnacle. So it's a good way to expedite the bidding process and to be much faster and easier to bid cars. Excellent. Mike, I'm going to, I'm going to sort of drill down a little bit there. It's a little bit counterintuitive um, what you're saying and, and I get why, but can we sort of expand on that a little bit more? If, if, you know, I suppose the point there was that this will enable a yard to pay more for a vehicle. The logical thing for anyone to sort of say there is why would I want to pay more for a vehicle? Um, but do you want to sort of expand on that a little bit more there and say why it actually enables that to happen in a positive way as opposed to a negative way? You're going to pay more for the right vehicle because you're not going to buy the wrong vehicle. Right now, we buy so many of the wrong vehicles because you've got overstock on the engines and transmissions that you shouldn't be buying for those. And the bid buddy shows you that you've got 10 of those in stock. And I'm going to automatically make that engine a very low priority. And you may not want to buy it. And you might throw a bid on it, but you're not going to get it. But then a car over here that you have a high demand for the engine, the transmission, and all the doors, you can pay a premium for that car and you will get it. But I will show you where you can profit and make the money in the return on those cars because BidBuddy projects those sales 
that you can hopefully sell all the parts. But I tell customers, what would you rather do? Would you rather buy a car that has five parts that you can sell? Or would you rather buy a car that has 20 parts you can sell? Obviously, you're going to pay more for the car that's going to sell 20 parts, and you're going to make a lot more as well. Okay, great. Okay? Thanks. That would Chad, did you want to add something there? Uh, Mike is exactly right. You know, I mean, we years ago, we used to buy cars at our place uh, back in Mobile, Alabama. We just seated the pants. We'd go to the auction, raise our hand, bid on cars based on what I thought we were selling. We implemented the Bid Buddy tool what, 10 years ago, Mike, I guess it was. We put it in our place 15 years ago and, and realized that, that by accurately looking at the requests that we had, for those particular vehicles, I could better evaluate and rank the vehicles. Started buying the correct vehicles. Yes, I was paying more for them, but I was buying the correct vehicles for my demand that I had. And therefore, my sales increased, my in-stock lookup ratios increased, my in-stock sales increased. And anybody that's in the recycling business knows you need to sell from your stock versus brokering, so therefore you can turn a higher profit. So it, it resulted in higher profits for the business. And systematically using the tool day in and day out. The system is adjusting every single day. So if I buy a Ford Ranger today, it's gonna know that the engine and transmission are in stock and then there's another one comes up tomorrow. It's not gonna be as high of a need tomorrow because I just bought one uh, today. And so the system is auto adjusting based on the supply and demand the entire time. And so it's a absolute perfect tool. When, when I arrived here in Australia four months ago now, I guess four months ago today is whenever I got here, and I realized that the Bid Buddy tool was not working near to its capacity because we were not getting the data from the auction companies. I, I, blew, a, I blew a gasket. I was like, we've got to fix this right now. This is a major problem. These recyclers are so handicapped by not having this data that, that this is crazy, you know? And so they were using the system completely manually and still to this exact day have been using it manually. And we're excited that in the next week, this is going to be rolling out. So they have this data flowing through their systems and, and use it correctly. And uh, it's going to change the buying habits of, of every recycler that's using the system. And I, I'm excited that, that uh, Jonathan and Mannheim has, has jumped on board and, uh, and agreed to share the data to, to Mike and the BidBuddy team. And uh, I'm excited for what it's going to do for recyclers here in the Australia, New Zealand market. Excellent. One of the, uh, obviously we spoke, Chad, to a lot of different recyclers, both buddy and non-buddy users about their buying habits in, in the Australian market and, and what they do. Um, obviously, the, as we, most of us know, if, if not all of us know, the most important job in a recycling business is the buying, right? The, the, you buy right, you sell right. Simple as that. And you sell right, you're making money. Yep, absolutely. Um, all things being equal. So one of the challenges that uh, we've seen a lot of uh, recyclers having is t having the time to actually buy right. So uh, when speaking with Jonathan, uh, you know, probably two months ago now about this and sort of saying, Jono, we need to do something here. Um, I suppose one of the key things that we, we, we sort of looked at there is how can we help a recycler buy more accurately more efficiently and more broadly. So what does that mean? That means I want to know that the car is the right car that I'm buying. I want to know that the parts are the right parts that I'm buying. And I want to be able to look at vehicles across more auctions. And in order to do that, you need time. Right? You either need time or a lot of money. A lot of money being a lot of people doing it. Uh, for one person to do that properly, even the way Bid Buddy was set up prior to the exact bids feed, um, probably was a bit difficult for the Australian market, better than what we had before, but certainly still more difficult than what it is in the US. So, um, Jono, from your perspective, enabling recyclers to look more broadly across your, your inventory, tell us a little bit about the, the auction structure today, why you do your auctions the way you do them. Uh, you've got national auctions happening um, we're still trying to understand that from, from an exact bits perspective for our model so that we can actually price it accordingly. Um, we hope to have that in place within the next couple of weeks. But from your perspective, tell us a little bit about why you do the high value, mid value and, and lower value vehicles and how you, you do all that. Yeah, sure. Um, I think the old way of doing auctions was that every auction facility around the country would run their own auctions 
once every week or fortnight or month, depending on the volume of stock um, that they had at any particular time. So each state um, would have a, a, a broad range of vehicles from a from a hundred thousand dollar vehicle to a fifty dollar uh, scrapper, and uh, that was great when people used to turn up and bid at their local auctions, and there were there was no online facility, etc. But one of the things that, from a seller's perspective, that we deal with, from an insurer's perspective, is one of their key drivers is what they call the life of the claim. So, turn, part of the life of the claim is how do I get a recovery on the written off vehicle asset? Now, if that asset sits around for a month, perhaps doesn't sell, sits around for another month, that life of that claim, that claim remains open that entire time. So, one of the drivers was how do we utilize our technology to, to shorten that experience for the seller? And then it got us to thinking about the buyers from a buyer's perspective and what, what is a buyer actually after? And so we, 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 we sat down and, and mapped that out and your, your high value salvage vehicles appeal to a buying demographic. And those vehicles are all over the country. And then our mid-range salvage vehicles are vehicles that may fall into a, 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 a buying demographic for a buyer that's interstate, so if the vehicle is in a Melbourne location, for example, a Sydney buyer may buy a vehicle around that $2,000 mark if there's a specific need for it. And then, of course, there's our low-value salvage vehicles, which are under 500, which no one's ever going to transport those, will very rarely transport those interstate. So they're going to go to a local buyer market. So we tried to target our auctions to the type of buyer that was interested in those vehicles. Now, some buyers bid across the whole gambit of, of what we sell, but most sort of focus on certain specific areas. So that's how we set our options up uh, and why we set them up that way. Uh, but for us, you know, just on, on Chad's comment before, it, exact bids is as much, if anything, a marketing tool for us. Um, you know, we spend thousands of dollars every year on marketing and trying to find um, new buyers and new participants in our auction schedule. And the reality is, you know, 80 to 85% of our buyers are, are repeat buyers, are industry buyers, are recyclers, dismantlers, repairers, exporters. So this enables us to, rather than, than hope those people find the cars that we have, and that enables us to say, well, don't look for the car. We're going to show you the cars that you should be interested in, the cars that you should be buying, that you're going to increase your business profitability uh, by participating and purchasing that vehicle, so that that's kind of the driver for us in, in, in with exact bids. One of, one of the key drivers. Excellent, Mike. Um, from a, a a bidding perspective, with your experience, uh, automotive recyclers that bid uh, locally as opposed to bidding more broadly. I've heard in, in over the years that um, if you look at more vehicles, if you look at more sales, your cost of goods comes down. Have you got any sort of evidence of that? And sort of, can you, can you expand on that a little bit? Sure. One of the biggest things that any salvage yard that tries to make a lot of money, they talk about their turns of their inventory and how often that whole inventory rotates through. That's because they're buying the right parts they're going to sell. If you could turn your inventory, you're going to, you're going to make more money. So, I, I did a lot of extensive work before I created BidBuddy in the early 2000s and late, and, and since even after I created BidBuddy with LKQ in America, and they're a major chain over here, obviously, with 60, 70 salvage yards. Yes, when they, when they expanded out and when they went out to 30 or 40 different auctions, their cost of goods came down considerably traveling outside of their general metro area. That's one of the reasons that I've liked this Mannheim deal so fast and exact bids too. It's going to be able to let the customer search outside of their area and buy. I understand you're a big country with a low population comparatively to let's say Georgia, where I could go over down to Jacksonville, Florida, and it's only 300 miles away and it's two big major populations. And it works a little bit better in America because of our population. But I talk to customers all the time and they'll only go to two or three auctions here in Colorado. And I go, well, you got to go to Dallas. You have to go to, I have to go to Kansas city and Utah and Salt Lake, which are the, our three as biggest metropolitan areas closest to me. And these are my local customers and they just can't get it through their head that sometimes it's better to buy something further away, pay a little bit extra in shipping, but if it's the right car and it's the right profitable car, it'll help you turn your inventory better, make you more money 
and in the long run, bring down your cost of goods. Yeah, what what I have found, you explained that reminded me of a deal that happened uh, with us years ago, is that uh, trucks are very popular in Texas. And so trucks bring a lot of money in Texas, but they're not as popular in Jacksonville, Florida, possibly. And so the same truck would actually bring a little bit less money in Jacksonville, Florida than it would in Houston, Texas. And so we found that we could actually buy the truck that we need to meet, meet our demand in the Jacksonville, Florida area, which is paying more than what the, the, the truck would bring in Jacksonville, but it's less than what it would bring in Houston, and it, it satisfied our need. And, uh, and we supplied, supplied the vehicle to our inventory to make it all work. And so you're exactly right. And the fact that, that searching a larger number of auctions and different sites allows you to, to pick the vehicles that uh, may be hot in one uh, area, one region, and cold in another region. You can actually buy them from the region where they're a little bit colder. Another example with that in the U.S. was Subarus. Subarus are real popular in the northern part of the country, and they're not popular in the southern part of the country. And so you, you could buy one in the southern part of the country, stock it in your inventory, sell the parts in the northern part of the country. And so we're going to see more of that happen as the recyclers here in the Australian market get to buy from a larger uh, supply of auctions across the entire country. Great, thanks, uh, thanks, Chad and, and uh, Mike for that. Um, got a couple of comments, questions coming through. Con, Con Douglas, does Big Buddy have the function to auto adjust once the vehicle has been purchased, or will it only adjust once the vehicle has been inventoried? Probably the best question for Mike. Can you? Yes. Work? There's a thing called pending quantity on hand. So the minute you mark a car as one those Hollander numbers will go into your interchange, or I'm sorry, will go into your inventory as pending quantity on hand. So yes, so the minute you buy a car, it helps you not overbuy. So the minute you buy a $12,000, you know, diesel motor, again, maybe I'm out of place because I'm more talk about in the United States, buy a big, big diesel, that diesel engine goes into stock, so it helps you not buy another one. So before your quantity on hand was zero, now it'll be one. And then, the next car you do that has the same motor, it will recalculate, the algorithms will recalculate and give you a different, um, uh, we rate the parts on it, we give it a, uh, a sales quantity ratio, we give it a sales, a close ratio on, on all those parts. So yes, the part will go in there. Two weeks later or when that car gets inventoried by that VIN uh, in the system, they get deleted from the bid buddy because now they're in your in your pinnacle system. That's called pending quantity on hand. And that's instantaneous the minute you mark a car as one. Mike, is that function working in the Australian model with Pinnacle Australia? Yes, we had a big, big deal with, I forget, I could ask Steve uh, Tapner, uh, one of the customers that we tried it out with. It'll get better, hopefully, if and when Pinnacle gives us the VIN from the system. Right now, we set it on a date. So let's say you know normally when you buy a car, it takes you 10 days before that car comes into your shop, before it gets into inventory. We can set it up because we don't get the VIN from Pinnacle, so we set it up for 10 days. And then at 10 days, it falls off. So that's the only hiccup on that in, in Australia. If we get the VIN from Pinnacle in the feed, then we, like we do here in the United States, the minute that VIN is inventory, it deletes that engine from the pending and it goes into the real quantity on hand. Excellent, okay. Um, we've got another comment there, Justin Walker. Mannheim will take a bigger share of the dismantling wallet with this first move. Guarantee our spend ratio will change. Well done, Jonathan, and seeing the, for seeing the advantages. Well, nice comment. Thanks, Justin, for that. Um, Jonathan, any comments? Yeah, well, that, yeah absolutely. Well, th yeah, no, thank you, nice comment. Um, and it, it, that we, we know that all our, our buyers generally buy across multiple auction houses. Um, you know, there's, there's the two large ones here in Australia and the two large ones in, in New Zealand. So if, if we can make the uh, buying process faster and easier when, when purchasing Mannheim vehicles um, and, and make it easier for our, and give our, our, our buyers uh, more time back in their own business to, to, to focus on things that make them money, um, then hopefully uh, that we'll, we'll see some um, increased activity um, and increased purchasing from our buyers, and um, that that'll be an excellent outcome. Great. Well, I think uh, 
certainly credit to to you for for taking that first move and, and driving hard i just think on that note for in the interest of transparency and and you know open book i think it is important for everyone to understand this isn't a, a manheim exclusive deal uh, certainly we're working very closely with with jonathan and the team there um but we, we are speaking with other auction houses and it's just a matter of their timing and their capability to enable these types of feeds um, in the short term. So that's where that's at. But um, yes, certainly uh, Mannheim's taking a, a really, really strong position here and working very closely with us. So we, we thank them for that. Just, um, on, just on that, Chris. Yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say, you know, um, and, we, and we fully support the other auction houses um, being a part of this because I think if there's one part of our industry is automotive auctioneers is that's that's lacked technological advancement. Really, the last big uh, impact, uh, technologically speaking, is was the introduction of online auctions, simulcast auctions. So I think um, there's there's a lot of uh, work that can be done from a from an auction house perspective, dealing with uh, working with um, with buyers, dismantlers, uh, recyclers, repairers, whoever. Um, to improve the process flow of vehicles, uh, improve the knowledge um, and improve um, the quality of the vehicle information that we provide. So we're, we're more than happy to, to be a part of that and to lead that and, and hope that would encourage the other auction houses to jump on board because it only makes the whole industry stronger uh, um, and, uh, and better for it, so. Excellent, that's great, that's great. Um, Jonathan, you mentioned before uh, New Zealand. So currently, and, and we'll talk a little bit about the rollout of, of the exact bids uh, integration, <coughs> excuse me, um, with Buddy and, and Mannheim in a second, but um, a leading question, New Zealand. What, what's the story there? I think you're one of the, the larger auction houses in the New Zealand market, or I think there's only two, but you're the, you're the larger one. Tell us a little bit about what, what it looks like for New Zealand. Yeah, look, New Zealand, um is definitely on on the roadmap this year for from our perspective for for this product. Um, there's a few changes that we're working through implementing at the moment in our New Zealand business that will make it um, uh, more streamlined um, and more aligned and, and able to be connected with the exact process more easily. Um, and our, our New Zealand buyer base will see some of those changes coming through from a technology perspective, from a from the way we how we do our auctions. Um, obviously. COVID um, has thrown some challenges up this year, plus some IT issues, obviously, that we had. So um, there are changes, some changes coming in New Zealand, but that's gonna, those changes are, are designed to align us much better with our overall Australian New Zealand business. Um, and a lot of them are based on feedback that we, we get through the, um, the NPS pro, um, pro process that um, a lot of our buyers will be familiar with when they get those surveys. So. Um, I would envisage that we'd be looking at, at a rollout maybe quarter quarter four this year. I think, um, for, for, from my perspective, unless we can get there sooner, we're we're pretty keen to just to hopefully roll it out sooner rather than later. Okay, so for those uh, on on the call from New Zealand, um, we'll certainly be uh, pushing as much as we can to make this live for you. Obviously, we've got to get it right at our end and, you know, everyone's got to be aligned in, in what we do, but certainly we want to get this out as quickly as possible. Chad, do you want to talk to us a little bit more about, okay, operationally, what actually happens? So, Okay, um, the, the data from Mannheim is going to flow through to the BidBuddy system so that the BidBuddy system can download a list of all of the vehicles at a certain auction. So just by clicking a single auction that may have 500 vehicles in it, the data will roll right into the BidBuddy system. However, if you're not an exact bids user, you have to go through and manually uh, inventory those 500 vehicles, selecting the correct interchange numbers and selecting the good panels and the bad panels. And then as you're doing that, the system is changing the rank of that vehicle in comparison to the other vehicles in the same auction. And so and it's getting a different score. That The score is actually called a QCI score inside BidBuddy. And, and, and as you select the correct interchange numbers and the good panels, the QCI score is adjusting based on your supply and demand of your unique operation. 
Well, there is a feature built into to BidBuddy that allows data to flow with other users inside BidBuddy. And exact bids is functioning as another user in the BidBuddy instance, and we will be selecting the interchange numbers and the good panels and bad panels uh, of each vehicle, and then allowing that data to flow through to other BidBuddy users through a feature inside BidBuddy called apps. And then apps is what allows this data to flow back and forth amongst the users. And so, and then that data, when you download the auction for the Mannheim auction, if, if exact bids has already previewed those, those vehicles, selected the interchange numbers and selected the good panels, all that is going to flow into your bid buddy system at that exact moment. So we're talking that you could have an auction starting in two hours. You click on that auction, it downloads all the lists and downloads all the uh, interchange selections that were made by exact bids and updates that into your system where it then runs all the algorithms and math uh, equations basically to look at your, your inventory, your supply and demand and calculate the unique bid for each vehicle that it needs to calculate and it does it just in a matter of a minute or two. And so you're talking a, a 300 to 500 vehicle auction that in a minute or two, if you have your pricing uh, set up correctly and all your bid buddy settings set correctly, it could actually price every vehicle accurately for you just in literally 60 to 120 seconds. And, uh, and so would I have trusted, do I trust that hundred percent? I'm an owner of an operation. I would still go through and look at the ones and be sure that the prices flowed through correctly because you may have missed a particular engine. Uh, you may have a price of zero set up on an engine and, and it's a high, high, high value, uh, highly needed engine. And so you need to identify that in your unique system. So I still would spend some time as an owner of an operation to review that and be sure that the prices from your own system populated into the bid buddy system correctly. Uh, for, for those bids, but it's going to vastly speed up the time associated with, with what it takes to preview and look at these cars. And it's going to give you the option, the ability to preview cars that you would have never selected and looked at before because you had to, you had to use your gut to select vehicles before and then just evaluate those 30 or 40 cars. And now you're saying you're going to have a, a larger list of cars to evaluate and it's done electronically based on factual data that's in your system versus gut opinion and old school way of doing things. So it's a, a, a radical shift. It's bringing the Australian market to the 21st century when it comes to bidding on cars, um, which I am hoping will, will help increase profitability, sales, volumes, turnovers, everything. I mean, I, uh, I was using Mike's system uh, with my operation in the US. I had a 43 day break even point which is extremely low. And so I was breaking even at 43 days, turning that money very fast, let me buy more cars and pump more cars through the system and resulted in higher profits along the way. So this is a big, big step for the Australian market to, to get in and to see this and to buy the correct cars. And like we said earlier, at the correct cost of goods. Okay. I agree. The, um... Just for technical, re the QCI stands for Quick Counts Index. We buy uh, algorithms from Jim Counts. It's in your Pinnacle system. Uh, I buy his algorithms. So that's what the QCI stands for. Without exact bids, it would be the highest of all. So if there was an engine that was extremely high value and there was an engine that was low value on a particular car, we would pick the highest and the QCI would be the highest. This way with exact bids, it's going to be the exact it's going to be the exact uh, value of that engine because they're going to tell you that it's the four cylinder that is maybe higher demand than the six cylinder in a certain car. Uh, but if without exact bids, I'll pick the highest. So you'll see the QCI drastically change. If you select the four cylinder, the QCI may go up or down on that car. Basically zero to hundred, a hundred percent car means you need all the part types in that car and you have a high demand for that. Uh, APPS stands for Auction Parts and Pricing Service, and that's the thing that you can share. So ExactBids is sharing one um, parameter of, of APPS. It can share four other, three other things. You can share actually the demand. If two customers were closely aligned and they, they bought and sold a lot of parts from the show, they can actually share their 
demand data and buy stronger. Maybe they're 100 miles apart and they really have a good relationship. You can also share your prices and your parts, the number of parts and like your quantity on hand and all that stuff. So apps is an extremely powerful. Uh, it doesn't cost anything extra uh, to be participate in apps. Now, Chad's gonna talk later on the pricing structure of exact bids, but that's because this is a service. But apps itself between two customers is, is free to share that all that, that, that other data. Let's say if I wanted to share my activity and Chris's yard was 100 miles away from my yard, we wanna put the two stores together, it helps out a lot. Cool. Okay. Um, lots of information coming through, guys. Chad's given a fairly detailed um, explanation of how exact bits will work. Those that are buddy users or not buddy users at this stage, um, please uh, ask questions if you have any questions as to how it will work and what you're going to see. Um, please just type them through and we'll attend to those as, as they come through the system. Um, Jonathan, <clears throat> beyond this, you talked about technology, you talked about how you want to sort of support the industry. What, tell us a little bit more about Mannheim, if you, if you can, what's, what's relevant to this industry and how you're looking at potentially working closer with the industry, you know, in 2021. Sure, look, um, for those that uh, were, were, were there a couple of years ago, um, some people might remember I presented to the uh, Recyclers Association about where we uh, saw the uh, our interaction with the biobase and in the industry heading. And uh, one of the topics that that sort of got a bit of attention was um, the ability for us, for salvage to, uh, if you like, be streamlined directly to uh, particular repairers, uh, sorry, particular dismantlers and recyclers. Um, and that's still our that's still our vision. Um, exact bids fits fairly and squarely within that as well. Um, we're actually building uh, or looking at building a system. Not looking at we are building a system now that will be launched sometime next year. That will start to make the next step of that process a reality. So what we want to do is 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 further reduce the time it takes for a vehicle to, uh, once it's written off, to be sold and, and get to a recycler. We wanna reduce the time it takes. We wanna handle that vehicle as, as little as possible. And the reason we wanna do that um, is not just a selfish Mannheim, uh, uh, you know, uh, perspective of, of making us more uh, more efficient, but also to it, the, the less a salvage vehicle is handled by forklifts and by tow trucks, the, the, the better the product is when it lands at a dismantler and recycler. And, you know, I'm not sharing anything um, with the audience that they don't already know that th there, there are a lot of times when, and when our, our buyers are ringing up and, and saying, hey, I've bought this vehicle and, and it's turned up and I've got these dents on it or this is extra damage has occurred. And, and we, we have to go through a, a rectification process with that because, you know, you, they're, they're non-mobile vehicles, you're using forklift. So these things happen. So the less that we can touch a vehicle, the better the quality of the product is that arrives at a, at a dismount and a recycler. Um, so exact bids fits into our longer term sort of vision of, of how quickly we can streamline that, that process from vehicle from total loss directly to dismantler and recycler. And of course, there's environmental benefits to that as well. You know, you're not moving a car two or three times on trucks across one side of Sydney or Melbourne to the other, uh, or Auckland, one side of the North shore of Auckland to, to Manukau. It's not, we, if we don't have to move a vehicle, let's not move a vehicle. So. Um, there's they're sort of some of the things and, and, that we're looking at and also using using the data that we have, the data that we collect on vehicles. Um, you know, um, we talked earlier uh, last week, Chris, just about some of the challenges that we've had this year with the quality of the information that we've been able to present to the market. Uh, we use a, a VIN decoding system to give us some really good data, but obviously with our IT challenges earlier this year, that that's meant that there's a backlog of stock that we're working through that's perhaps not as um uh the, the information is not as uh full and complete as what it normally would be and also COVID plays a part you know the the, the term that's been you, you hear a lot is abundance of caution and that's exactly what what we've used from a from an operational perspective so how we how our booking staff you know wearing their necessary ppe uh process and booking a vehicle when it arrives on site 
has been challenging at times. So you'll see quite a few vehicles maybe come through at the moment that don't have odometer readings or, um, and that might be that, that we can't get into the car to view it or we have to be careful about how we, you know, the, the condition of the front of the vehicle and where the battery is and all those sorts of things. So um, we're working on that. We're working on uh, a better image quality as well because that's really, obviously really important for our, for our buyers. Um, to buy in an all online environment, if you haven't got the quality images that you need, you're not going to make the best decisions. So those are the elements that we're working on over the next 12 months to, to really drive the industry forward and to, to help our buying network um, make better buying decisions. So, Thanks for that. I think it's really, really important here that as an as a automotive recycling industry, the industry embraces this closeness, if you like, of relationship with the auction houses. Traditionally, we've been somewhat, how would I put it? Not, well, we haven't really communicated that well. You've been the seller, we've been the buyer. I'm, I'm saying we as the automotive recycler. And, you know, you're selling something, we're buying something, we just go there and we, we, we bid and whatever, right? These types of initiatives, um, in, in our view, are going to be critical to the seller and the buyer building a a longer term strategic relationship that we share ideas. So what Jonathan just spoke about then, you know, we've been talking about over the past month uh, with Jono and the team there about odometer readings, about quality of photos, about damage on vehicles, you know, and, and, and all that type of stuff, which we as an automotive recycling industry have found quite challenging over the years. You know, if there's no odometer reading on that $12,000 engine, Mike, you're sort of thinking twice about what you're going to pay for it, right? So, Jono, in your, from your perspective, it makes sense to have an odometer reading there because then there's more surety around the bid that someone can put on it. Is it worth an extra $1,000 or am I going to discount it a little bit because I don't know what the uh, odometer reading is? Um, so, they're the types of things that I think as a industry, as a, you know, uh, an industry that works together, we should be embracing. Um, and hopefully we'll get more and more of this with, with these types of relationships with Mannheim and others moving forward. So um, I'm excited about that. Now, Jonathan, you just answered a number of the questions that have come through, which was vehicle damage, photos, odometer readings. Uh, if anyone has anything else, um, you know, please uh, send those questions through that you may have um, so that we can talk to Jonathan about it. I was just, just going to touch on a, sorry, Chad, to cut you off. I was going to touch on a point you made. I mean, you're exactly right. The auction houses, I guess, have always historically been viewed as a necessary evil. You know, we, we, we create that market that, that, that where, where buyers have to come to, to get stock. And, um, you know, I wouldn't say um, we've taken that, those buyers for granted, but we probably haven't really invested, we haven't invested in the relationship and the opportunity uh, to help our buyers be successful. And, and that's, that this is, this is what this is all about. And if our buyers are successful, like I said, 80, 80, 85% of my, my, our customers are repeat buyers. They're, they're, they're the industry that keeps coming back to, to, to drive their business. So if we can invest on making, and I've, I've said it before, but in making them and helping them be successful, then we'll be successful as an auction house as well. And we've really, we're really pushing that philosophy now. In, in understanding that you know we, we need our buyers who are a repeat buyers to be successful so we can also be successful so that's what's driving a lot of these changes great great chad you were going to say well gary lindros is a uh, recycler in tallahassee no he's in jacksonville florida jacksonville, yeah. jacksonville florida he's also the president of the florida association he commented on the, our facebook uh uh, watch party is going on right now that your gut is wrong when you're trying to bid on vehicles and so you, we must depend on data and do it accurately and and that's you know he's reiterating what i had said earlier that that that's an old way of doing stuff is putting using your gut to make a decision on which vehicles to buy and how much to pay we, we've got to to embrace the technology embrace the data flow and uh and use it correctly yeah. Absolutely. I agree. Every customer that I've ever set up a bid buddy on, the first time they do the QCI download, they see 100% or 89, 100% score. They said, I never would have looked at that car. I never would have looked at that car before the score is that high. And that's one of the reasons I did it because when I ran my own yard, I was young and dumb. And I only ran the yard for about four years before I started working for Hollander. And I always bought, you know, I liked red and I liked Chevy's. 
I bought a lot of red Chevys and they didn't obviously make me any money. So um, that's one of the reasons I wanted to create the bid buddy. We can tell you like Chevys by the pillow in the background. Uh, there's probably, if you look around my office, there's probably 30 or 40 references to the, to the bow tie. I'm sure, I always wear a shirt. I'm sure there's a Corvette sitting in the garage too. He's a Corvette. Yeah, I'm sure. Yes, there is. But the, the uh, that, uh, everything I'm, yeah, I know I'm a little crazy, but what the hell? Crazy is good. Crazy is good. So I think that that's a really good point. One of the things that I hear from a lot of recyclers every single day is that salvage is getting harder and harder to buy. Whatever the reason is, whether it's the good stuff's expensive, whether there's a lack of it, whether it's all hail salvage up in Queensland at the minute, John, I'm not sure. But it is getting tougher. You know, it's getting tougher to buy salvage. Part of the reason, in my view, and from what I've heard from different people in the US, um, Mike, uh, and what you've just mentioned there is part of the reason for that is probably because we're attuned to looking for the same cars every time. So we've only got so much time. Um, right. The way the, the, the bidding process works today, whether it's a scientific approach using a bid buddy or a pinnacle bid pad or, you know, the gut, you still have to look through each one of those 300 vehicles to work out which sure. one you want to evaluate. And as a result, we've human nature means that we default to the Hilux, the Land Cruiser, the Ranger, the BT-50, the, all of those cars, right, that everyone sort of looks at and wants. I uh -huh. think there's a lot of diamonds in the rough that we're currently not looking at. Yeah. And I think we're, what we're going to see from the, the feedback I've had out of the US is that the more vehicles that you are actually able to look at, the more broadly you can buy and make your buying more simple, more simple, more balanced, and yeah. actually buy the cars that you have to buy to make a sales. Yes, I agree. Excellent. We've got a comment there. Peter Butler, Bid Buddy has revolutionized how we buy vehicles in conjunction with exact bids and Mannheim. This will take it to the next level. Yes, we pay more for the for the right vehicles and we buy less of the wrong vehicles because each business needs different part types. How will exact bids choose yes. which parts are to be focused on per vehicle? Good question. Hey, Mike, excellent R2-D2 on the wall. <laughs> well, you're not going to get a comment from uh, from Peter without a little bit of uh, a smart ass comment there as well. So, <laughs> yes. no, but that is a good point about uh, which part types are you going to concentrate on? Yeah, absolutely. So what we've done is we've looked at approximately the top 22 part types. So we're we're going to take engine, gearbox, transfer case, diff, um, and then look at bonnets, guards, well, depending on where you are in in the US, wings, hoods. Yeah. Bonnets, guards, headlights, door mirrors, doors, tailgates, boot lids, bumpers, headlights, grills. I think I said headlights twice um, and so on. So it's about 22 key part types that we'll be looking at. Um, and the initial, um, I suppose, uh, evaluation will come through um, with, with those parts chosen. So hopefully that answers your question, Peter. Always open to feedback. Chad, your views on that? Uh, I, we worked diligently to, to select that list in the last couple of weeks as to what our plan is and what our part types are going to be to preview. And I, I believe that we've selected the, the part types that account for a grand total of about 80% of the sales of a recycler. And so uh, making the decision on those top 80% is, is wise. Uh, you know, it takes about five or six part types to equal 50%, but, but we wanted to go to 80% of what your sales are to help you choose and, and have the correct part type. So it's a uh, well thought through plan to, to do these exact part types that we're, we're going to be working with. I always tell customers when they ask which part types to put on, I just basically tell them any part type worth more than X, $200, $100, whatever you feel like it, to put in that. And there's also a couple of reports in your pinnacle, right, that tells you your most profitable or your most requested and most sold part types. You can use those reports. Um, and like you said, that's, I think 80%, 22 part types is about right, is, is a good number to start with. Yep. And, and again, we're going to be flexible and adapt to the demand of our customers. If, if there's a demand for, for all of a sudden us to, to inventory yeah. quarter panels, which is uh, un unusual, but uh, yeah. we do whatever our customer asks us to do. Excellent. Um, we've got a question that's come through from Len Mannheim, New Zealand. Uh, reply to surveys, but little change. Uh, we ask for keys. Um, 
if they're listed uh, often don't photo quality photos showing damaged parts not the good ones um, sometimes damage areas purposefully not shown possibly and same comments about kilometers not listed when they are high be good if some action was taken on these so that's a comment there from uh, from Lem for yep. uh, and I think you know, a couple of those I probably would disagree with um, the obvious ones, but th there are quite a few there that are the le legitimate concerns that have been um, raised before. And what I can say is we are working through those challenges. Um, uh, particularly this year has been a really difficult year for everybody, um, but particularly uh, for the salvage auction industry um, with just, and, and Mannheim in particular. So, um, a lot of those concerns will be addressed. I would say watch this space over the coming weeks and months. Um, also to uh, the New Zealand buyers will notice um, over the coming weeks will be um, a change to our platform over there and how they, how they bid on vehicles. So some of the enhancements and improvements we've been making, uh, certainly in the Australian business will now be, uh, will soon be available in the New Zealand business. And I think that'll make the bidding environment, at least for, for customers in New Zealand, a lot better. But certainly, a lot of those concerns that, that he's raised, that Len's raised, are being addressed and will be fixed um, uh, over the coming weeks and months. Excellent, excellent. I think one of the things there, Len, is, again, to reinforce what I said earlier about the, the working relationship and the, the openness of it, we're now in a, uh, a position where... Sorry if you can hear a dog in the background, but my dog's just started going off. It's, anyway... Um, we're, we're now in a position where we've got this open and transparent sort of communication happening between Mannheim and, and us. Um, obviously, from an exact bits perspective, if we don't see photos of the good part of the car, we can't evaluate the vehicle, right? So that's, that's simple. Um, so we'd be, uh, we'd, you know, we'll put our hand up and, and talk to Jonathan and give him examples of those types of things in that open and transparent sort of communication flow so that we can get those things fixed. So hopefully... Um, we can we can keep on pushing forward with those enhancements. Um, we've got a question here that's come off Facebook from Dave Morgan for Mannheim. Um, is the data feed to Bid Buddy exclusive? Pinnacle tried to engage with Mannheim several years ago, but communication stopped. Would be interested to know if a feed to Pinnacle for non-Buddy users would be possible. Thanks, Dave Morgan. Joe, I, th I mean, I can jump in quickly here, eh, if, if you don't mind. Um, so... Just so you understand, Dave, and happy to take this offline as well, Dave, um, to discuss this, but the way the feed is working at the minute, Mannheim uh, is providing that feed through to exact bids, and we've got a server set up there with, we're manipulating that information so that it's fed through accordingly to, to Buddy. Um, in time, that may go directly, um, obviously subject to Mannheim's view of that and how they want to deal with that. But that's, that's how it's working at the minute. We can talk to uh, Jonathan and understand what his view is on, on that feed and how he wants that feed to work. Um, Jonathan, you may want to add more to that, but you know, that's, that's what I'm seeing there, probably a discussion with, with Jonathan and see what you want to do there. Yeah, I, I reckon uh, that, that may have been discussed prior to my, my well, with my predecessor perhaps, I don't recall a conversation with Pinnacle uh, with regards to that direct feed, but I may, I may, you know, I haven't got the best memory at the best of times. But yeah, you know, happy to have a chat with you, uh, Chris. We can we can have a have a discussion around that. See what that looks like. I think you're right. Might have been with Pochi at the time. I'm not sure. Might have been. Probably. Okay. All right, Dave. We'll take that offline if that's okay, and talk with Jonathan and see what what that looks like. Okay, we're coming to the last five minutes. Um, Chad, should we? outline some timing here what does launch look like pricing we need to talk about pricing we're not there yet but we'll communicate that clearly to the market but you may want to expand on that a little bit um, from an exact bits perspective uh, what else is there um, if we launch where are we going to launch first are we going to do all auctions on day one how, how is all that going to work yep. okay um all right, we anticipate the data flow to BidBuddy to, to be working sometime in the next week or 10 days, probably, I would imagine. We had a little glitch today where we realized we had a time zone issue. 
Uh, so we, we're working through that today. Our programmer just messaged and said he thinks he has a solution for it. So uh, hopefully I'll have the data flowing through to BidBuddy in the next, you know, 48 hours, 72 hours is what we kind of hope. Uh, then those vehicles will be populating in the BidBuddy system. The exact bid system, uh, we will probably start in the area where the highest concentration of recyclers that are currently using the BidBuddy system exists. That's going to be in the Sydney area. And so there are more BidBuddy users in Sydney than there are in other parts of the country. So we probably will start previewing the, the auctions that are focused in the, in the Sydney area. Um, we're going to, to start with one or two auctions and, and start with a smaller batch of the vehicles that have a, a higher uh, generic QCI score before we, we roll into all of them because we have to train our team. I've done the math. This is going to take a team of six uh, parts previewers to preview all these cars, uh, just what Mannheim has. And so it's going to take a team of six. Uh, we've got a team of three in place right now, and so it's going to be training to get them up to speed on how everything works, and then we'll slowly add and train more. And as we have the resources and capability, we will ex expand to more auctions. Our goal is for every car at every auction is what our goal is, which with Mannheim is in the neighborhood of 6,000 vehicles per week. Is that right, Jonathan? I believe that's... I think closer to two and a half. 2,500 per week? Okay. 2,500, yep, yep. Okay, it was maybe at 6,000 with all the auctions in Australia is what it was. Yeah, and so yeah. it's gonna take a good bit of manpower to make this work. And so it's gonna be a little bit of a, a, a ramp up to make it all happen. And so uh, we'll slowly be adding auctions as there's demand. And so if there's a bid buddy user that says, hey, I need this auction previewed, then we would divert resources to do that particular auction. So if there was a particular group of users that wanted the Perth auctions to be previewed, then we would devote, divert over and, and do what's needed. So it's all gonna be reactive based on the demand of the customer. Um, pricing, again, that's very difficult for us to put a, a price in place right now because the, the man, this Mannheim auction is set up differently than I have ever seen auctions run in the past. In the US, uh, auctions are strictly, you know, this one city and the cars are selling at this one site. And, and here we're looking at, at 500 vehicles that may stretch from Melbourne to Perth, all selling on one auction. And so, you know, I, I hate to, to charge a customer for previewing cars in Perth when there's no chance they can actually bid on cars in Perth because it's too far to transport the vehicle. And so we're, we're really struggling with exactly how the pricing model is going to work. It, it may be a per auction fee or it may be a per vehicle fee that's in the, the small sense per vehicle. Uh, our, our goal is to make it much cheaper than what it would take for you to employ somebody to do it, but we also have to make the, the commercials and the, the financials work on our end too. So uh, pricing will be rolled out probably the next two or three weeks as we see how all the auctions are laid out completely inside the BidBuddy system and how we can, can make it all work. Because Mike and, and Triple J at BidBuddy are working to actually figure exactly how those auctions are going to lay out in the BidBuddy system and how a user can actually download them. John said he had a way because we're working on the American Mannheim uh, that has a similar situation. And John said there's an extra, maybe an extra column in there that'll have location. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. And Justin Walker's suggestion of a free trial. I don't know about that, man. <laughs> <laughs> we have a 60 day money back guarantee. <laughs> I do. I don't know about exact bids, but uh, buddy. <laughs> We have a 60 day uh, money back on that. And honestly, our return ratio is very low. Yeah. The, the approach we're taking to the market is we're not looking for uh, locking contracts or anything like that. We're saying, here's the opportunity. You don't have to download it. If you don't want to download it, you, you don't get the exact bit speed. Uh, you'll still see the cars on, on, um, on Buddy. That's the deal we've done with, with Mike and, and Jonathan there to make sure the cars are available for you. Uh, we think you're gonna see the value in it. I think um, that's that's fairly evident. Um, so you, if there's value in something, people tend to use it. So we're happy to, for it to be open and transparent in that context. So use what, pay for what you use, basically is the approach we're gonna take. Okay, um, so we're two or three weeks away from launch, live launch. So let's call it mid to third week of July, hopefully cross fingers if every piece of the technology comes together nicely. 
Um, what do we do between now and then? We'll be communicating with each of the um, participants on the call with others in the market about pricing, uh, any new updates that are coming through, uh, which auctions will be, will be going live. We'll be talking to Buddy users uh, across Australia today. We've got new Buddy uh, inquiries coming through because of the exact bits function. Um, we'll feed those through to Mike and, and Steve and his, their teams here. Um, but certainly we'll, we'll keep you in the loop. You can go to exactbids.com.au. There is a, an expression of interest there. So those buddy users or even non-buddy users that are interested, go to that uh, website, exactbids.com.au. Send us um, a comment or an expression of interest. We'll then put you on the list. Uh, we can start doing some of the prep work in the background to, to link apps to, um, to buddy um, so that we've got the exact bid sort of connection happening right there. Um, any non-Buddy users that want to inquire about Buddy, again, use the same link. Uh, you can contact us and we can feed that information through. So um, on that basis, uh, we've just gone uh, 11 a.m. or just past the hour. So I think it's probably time that we we closed. Uh, last comments from, from the teams. Jonathan, can I hand over to you for your last comments before we, we get off this call? Oh, look, I, I think just to say that we're really excited to be a part of uh, the exact bids rollout, uh, to be, uh, you know, the first mover on this. Um, and it's, it's, it's a great opportunity to, to work more closely with our buyers. So I think, I think this is going to sort of really change how a lot of our buyers um, interact with, them, a, a, with us and, and improve their profitability and, and give them more time back in their business to do, to focus on their business. So, um, we're really excited and uh, glad to be a part of it. Great, thanks, Jonathan. Mike, yes, over to you. you're smiling over there, so let's let's uh, let's hear from you. What, what's you got some? Uh, I got my business partner and his mother on hip chat texting me to tell me to smile. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, there you go. Our inner office, our inner office. No, I'm just excited to make a bed buddy good, better in Australia than it has been. I you know I think obviously I. I think BidBuddy is extremely great in the United States. It's you know it's been out here for 15 years, uh, so I'm I'm really excited that we're making BidBuddy a lot better for the Australian market, and I think it'll help the guys a lot. Um, and you know I'm looking forward to traveling over there some more. You know, that's another reason I can get more customers over there. I can justify coming over there for nicer vacations. Excellent. When the borders open, that is. Anyway, that's, nah, that's true. Yeah, it'll be. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be. Come on. <laughs> Chat on that note. Over to you for your closing comments. I, I'm excited to to finally be uh, rolling this uh, product out to the recyclers in the Australian market, so that people like Jamie Nunn can go home at five o'clock and spend time with his family instead of going home and work an auction for three or four hours in the evening. And and so it's 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 enjoyment of life. This is speeding up the ability for you to to. So preview the vehicles and taking the work off of you. That's the, the intent of what we're trying to do. And our goal is to make it easier on the recyclers to, to be profitable and to be uh, more profitable than what they currently are. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Um, from me, just quickly in closing, firstly, on behalf of Auto Partner Solutions, been great um, engaging with Jonathan and the team at Mannheim. Really looking forward to a long-term relationship with Mannheim to uh, to add value to both your business and the automotive recycling industry. Likewise, Mike over at Buddy and the, and the team there, great sort of engaging and, and you know, partnering in this in this deal. Uh, we're looking forward to, to continuing to grow that. As far as all the recyclers are concerned, um, if you're a Bid Buddy user, I think you're going to get huge benefit out of these feeds and, and hopefully exact bids. Uh, if you're not a BidBuddy user, well then become a BidBuddy user. So um, I think uh, we're all in for a you know a, a good show as we move forward beyond 2020, and uh, hopefully next year opens up a little bit more and, and things become a little bit easier. So everyone, thanks very much for for attending. We do appreciate your time, Mike and Jonathan. Again, thank you, Chad. Thanks very much as as well. Thanks and bye for now. Thank you guys. Thank Cheerio. you. Thank you.